Yeah, let's dive into the Vosh stuff. Um, this is pretty interesting. Vosh has been totally at war with his own audience, his own community over the last couple of days. Um, I think he's been fairly anti-trucker convoy for the most part, um, except for he did he did say that it was over the line when the government basically announced that they were going to be um, invoking emergency powers in order to potentially freeze the bank accounts without any due process of uh, involved personnel, which is a pretty wide umbrella. Uh, anyway, he said that this was clearly authoritarian, clearly over the line and setting a terrible precedent, which is, of course, true. But his audience didn't necessarily agree, and especially some of his Canadian viewers did not agree. Um, so he's just totally been at war, which, to be honest, I do respect. He's not just submitting to his audience. He's actually, you know, doubling down on his um, correct stance on the issue. And let's take a look here at some of the tweets before we get into this video. Uh, here's one, uh, just a response to somebody. This one, here's another uh, do you know which political ideology is famous for exploiting political crises to enact emergency powers which extend the authority of the state, comparing basically the right wing response to 9-11 and such uh, to what's going on here on the left? Um, he says here, you unsub for me because you're a liberal and I did not have sex with your wife enough for your liking. Uh, so, yeah, just totally choosing violence, as this tweet says. Um, take that comrade out of your Twitter name, you status quo liberal bitch. So basically saying anyone that's sympathizing with or defending Trudeau's decision in this instance to freeze these people's assets and to invoke the emergency powers, basically just saying you're a liberal cuck. Um, you're not a real comrade if you're uh, basically willing to throw away your principles on a dime just because it's affecting the other side. And again, I respect this stance. I think Vosh is correct here. Uh, although, to be honest, his entire take uh, is a little bit cringe, as we'll quickly find out. Uh, not everything is great as far as his uh, opinion here, but at least in this one instance, he's acknowledging the dangerous, terrible precedent that this emergency powers invocation sets for protests, um, and especially because it seems like it's partially at the behest of the American government. So, yeah, it's definitely pretty funny to see Vosh just going to war with some of his community here, totally calling out and lashing out at the people that have been criticizing him and his take uh, on this matter. And again, we'll get into a full video where he goes in depth as to this uh, opinion and all the nuances that go along with it. But yeah, we can start off with these um, these Twitter messages. Did you have anything to say, Zach? Well, one, just one, uh, he's technically correct here, right? Like, yeah, th this is a horrible, liberal, censorious fucking like, oh, I want the state to shield me from ideas I disagree with. Like, where, how the fuck could that go wrong? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, are you dumb as rocks? Like, I think Vosh actually does a tremendous job for a little bit on some of the streams that I've been catching recently. Just like coming up with really funny insults to just bash these people who are finding weird ways to uh support justin trudeau's decision to unilaterally unilaterally without any court oversight just decide to order banks in canada to freeze funds crypto wallets being frozen all kinds of stuff like this is a massive uh violation of any kind of right to protest that you could possibly uh conceive of uh in in, a, in, in the th the fact that all people aren't just uniting and being like fuck what the truckers stand for i don't give a shit at all uh but this is a, this is a a bridge way too far uh, this is 100% uh, a violation of their rights, and, and it would bite the left in the ass so fucking hard. So fucking hard. What if all the donations to fucking uh, Black Lives Matter got frozen over the overnight? Or, God forbid, one, one day we finally get a... a, a large swaths of the country to you know stop traffic for something i don't fucking know medicare for all student loan forgiveness legal weed i don't care anything and now all of those donations can be seized by the government uh you know whatever i obviously this isn't happening in america but i don't like the scary precedent that that sets and, and just as a reminder for everybody i brought this up last time is that when Donald Trump was about to invoke his emergency powers uh, and declare a state of emergency, and we were all horrified, horrified by all of the fucking crazy shit that he was allowed to do, turn off the internet, fucking take over the airports, all kinds of crazy shit shut down, uh, uh, you know, leaving the nation, all kinds of crazy shit became in his power uh, or became, you know, uh, part of his decision. Either way, uh, we were all horrified about that. This is basically Justin Trudeau doing the same thing. Um, you have to be consistent in opposing this uh, 100 uh, 100 percent. But as you uh, mentioned, Gavin, not all things are as they appear. I was sitting at 
uh, the, our coffee shop that we go to uh, a lot this morning after I fucking, you know, trotted there all the way through a goddamn blizzard. And I was watching Vosh uh, with my headphones on and I was like, yeah, you know what? He's finally coming around. He's making a really good point about this. And then the bomb drops and you're like, oh, this is a standard Vosh take. This Vosh video, um, he goes in depth here. We don't have to watch the entirety of it. Um, but this is called response to the Canada cucks. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty interesting. Again, the cucks instead of the Canucks. I'm sorry, I had to make that <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, let's take a look here, guys. Excited to hear your responses. Let's start up. You guys know the drill. Uh, no chat means offline means not wearing pants. And I'm not even wearing a shirt that's in my general streaming rotation anymore. Dude. This was how his watch his dad got ready, um, ready before he would a lecture. Plastic him too. glue stain from a Warhammer miniature assemblage from some time ago. So um, the, uh, the the community discourse about the whole Canada Freedom Convoy Emergencies Act being passed by Trudeau thing rage. You know, it, it, the, the discourse continues, and um, I've talked about this. I'll continue to talk about this. I'll have people on to talk about it with me. Um, but I wanted to really quickly do this offline too reassert my positions just to make sure they're clear because my initial expression of my opinions was mostly just me complaining about people which is my right but it's good to clear things up um and i also want to complain about people so let's open with the complaining okay i'm actually really disappointed in my community you guys are letting me down on this one not because you disagree it's okay to disagree However, a lot of the disagreements that I'm seeing are rooted in really bad arguments. For instance, a lot of people in my community are responding in ways which indicate they're not actually familiar with my positions, which after I've made them clear on Twitter and on stream and in a video, I just don't think is acceptable, you know? So there are people who seem to keep insinuating, for example, that because I believe uh, it is wrong for Trudeau to uh, authorize, you know, the, the use of the Emergencies Act to have banks freeze the assets, of people associated with the protests that's what i'm against people are assuming then that nothing should be done or that i or that i believe you know that the protests are good actually i think that's really dumb um because i've been clear that i think a preferable solution would be to send in the military which sounds like a you know obscene uh counter <laughs> wait wait, wait, wait is... hold on one second hold on one second i was like i was about to jump in and be like guys this is a fucking rational take in fact i was about to be like you know one of the re one of the ways that Gavin and I were we realized we'd had more of a rounded out audience than we'd ever had before, and, and in a way that I, I wasn't super pissed off about. I was like, "Oh, this is just different, right?" Was that we actually noticed that we were getting shit from people being like, "Oh, you guys think this Canadian trucker thing is good?" And I was like, "Wow, we've actually got some some straight up Democrats in our audience. This is interesting. Like, thank you. We'll we'll push you to the left over time. I tr trust me." Um, but anyway, then he just comes in with a fucking wallop right here. He's like, he's like, he's like, some people are misleading and thinking that I'm saying that these things are good. No, I think something should be done about this. Let's bring in the military. I want to, I want ca Canada to use militant military force to break up these protests because that won't have any consequences for the left in the future. Yeah, truly insanity. And and yeah, it's one thing to say, you know, if there's an unlawful uh, occupation or demonstration, then I guess maybe the police, uh, if that's the point he's trying to make, but the military, you want to deploy the Canadian military on the streets of Canada against Canadian citizens. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's what Trump tried to do during the George Floyd protests. That's what he tried to do to Black Lives Matter protesters and received massive backlash from people exactly like Vosh. So it's really bizarre that he goes straight to the military, um, treating this as if it's like some sort of invasion of a foreign army when no it is just canadian citizens uh protesting against the canadian government and by the way i don't happen to particularly agree with those protesters or their demands um i think most of them are right wing and most of them are reactionaries and most of them uh and they, and they don't really represent the majority of working people in canada or truckers um that being said they have the right to protest they have the right to make their demands heard uh, and express how they feel politically. That's the whole point of democracy. And so far, seemingly, it has been uh, relatively nonviolent, um, only, you know, very annoying potentially for the people to live there. What with the honking horns and blocking of roads and all that. But um, yeah, I, I think that Trudeau's response is totally over the top. Sets a terrible precedent, which Vosh ad uh, correctly identifies. It's just crazy that he then goes on to advocate sending in the military. Yeah, this is the kind of weird dissonance where it's like, I, I'm like, 
man, I don't want to do any like medical prescriptions, but maybe you want to get like checked out for a tumor in your fucking brain. Like, do you re does anybody remember not that long ago when we were having a fucking historic meltdown here on the left? I don't know if I was like in an echo chamber and really it was just me and like 800 people that I was constantly with. But I thought all of us were like, holy shit. If the military gets deployed on our fucking asses when we're outside protesting, this is fascism. This is fucking wrong. And I don't care who is fucking president. Are you fucking kidding me? Now, you, like, I remember that was one of the like massive, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sagar and Jetty on uh, back what was rising. He was like, yeah, send in the military. And I was like, are you fucking insane? Are you a crazy person? I actually stopped watching the rising for a while because I was like, I don't need to just turn this on and get triggered every morning. Um. But uh, it was absolutely craziness to me. And now to just see him like, yeah, it's kind of like when he was like, I think we should be sending weapons so that they can kill as many fucking Russians as they come over the border. And like, it's blah, 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 blah. I was like, this isn't a fucking Sylvester Stallone movie guy. Like, this is a, this is a real life situation. You don't just send in the military unless you're saying, I want those people to get fucking killed. Because that's what the military does. They don't do de-escalation. They do militant clinical executions that is what the military does to send um um because i've been clear that i think a preferable solution would be to send in the military which sounds like a you know obscene uh counter argument but it is a thing that i would want done and the fact that i would be comfortable with that resort being taken is clearly an argument in favor of the idea that i am neither not taking the protest seriously or that I don't think there should be any solution at all. So I don't know why people in my community keep saying that. It should also be noted that um, the bridge that was being blocked, the one that was the main problem for economic activity being disrupted, it has been cleared as of February 13th before the Emergencies Act. So, you know, just saying. Not to say there aren't other problems. There are, but look, um, that's one thing. For two, I've noticed this really. So if they're not even blocking off the bridge, then why would we send in the military, or why would Canada send in the military? Is it really a threat that uh, uh, warrants that sort of a extreme response? Like if they were taking people hostage, maybe, and like you know, shooting bullets on the streets of uh, the city, then then maybe. But I, I just don't understand how an occupation, a mostly peaceful occupation of truckers, uh, would at all warrant bringing in the military. Unless they're directed against issues they have a different opinion on, in which case my mannerisms are suddenly a problem rather than the arguments. So, for example, on my subreddit where people are seething about me, there are people who seem to be like really upset with the fact that I engage in like ironic nationalist posturing or that I'm mean to people that I disagree with. You guys love that. OK, like, come on, don't pretend if you dislike it when it's being done to issues where you and I take different positions, then focus your disagreement on the difference in opinions. Don't suddenly take an issue with the aesthetic or the rhetoric of the delivery of those opinions because it's against you. That's pretty hypocritical. If that's the case, then you don't actually have a, then you're not actually OK with how I do things. You just, you know, uh, don't like it when it's done to you. It's just really, yeah, it's it's pretty dumb. So it, take issue with the positions. There are also people who are saying that I'm having like a meltdown. On and Twitter, if we pause this fine, really quickly, anybody that wants to see a blatant hypocrisy of Vosh, just go back and watch his, his response on Crystal Kyle and Friends to force the vote and then be like, you should argue the substance. Who cares what kind of package it's delivered in? But anyway, I dig Positions. There are also people who are saying that I'm having like a meltdown on Twitter, which is fine, but I see people comparing it to Destiny. And his behavior on Twitter, which, again, I have to ask, you do realize the issue with Destiny's behavior on Twitter, right? It's the whole rape apologia, transphobia, harass, like, it's it's all that stuff. It's not just him getting mad at people on Twitter. Do you think, when people talk about, like, Destiny on Twitter, do you think they mean, like, oh, he gets mad on Twitter? Like, do you think that's the, the issue at hand? Like, that's, that's the criticism. No. Uh, there are also a ton of people in my community who are making this weird, like, you're... Americans, you're not even Canadian, don't talk about our issues. First of all, again, this comes across as hypocritical to me because this is like a non-argument, you know? It's like, this is an argument people make when they don't have a real argument. If you disagree with something I believe in, you're free to critique it, but this whole like, well, stay out of our issues, we're not Americans, you're an American, this could be used as a blanket defense of any criticism made of any behavior going on in any other country. 
it's it's like a it's like a, a thought terminating cliche. What am I supposed to do with that exactly? Well, I you will know, like, disagree slightly with Vosh on that because he's going to go on and mention like, oh, well, why why can't I give my thoughts on on Ukraine? And the only slight pushback I have there is it's like, well, maybe we should actually probably listen to the people of Ukraine first uh, before we fucking like just barrel over them. I mean, because I generally agree, right? Sometimes like people in the comments will be like, Zach, you said fuck David Dole. You don't care what he thinks. He's a Canadian. But then you had Lance on from the service. I'm like, yeah, I was joking when I said fuck what he thinks. I don't care. He's a canadian but um at the end of the day i do think that there's like a twinge of truth in that like you know this doesn't affect you you don't live here like i, I care about what you say slightly less but i also don't think it's good to use it as like a shield or like oh i don't have anything to say about you but just like shut up it's you know it's kind of like the way that like all of those sjw's in the past would be like that's a great straight white male perspective as a way of like just not having to debate their positions which i understand is endlessly frustrating yeah, I mean, if it was an issue that was very exclusively and specifically related to Canada politics that didn't apply elsewhere, then maybe I would agree with that more. Um, but this is about protesting and it's about COVID restrictions, which are, you know, political issues that we're dealing with here in America, too. And the precedent set up there in Canada could absolutely uh, affect what's going on here in America. So, yeah, I think it's fair game for Americans to talk about it. Um, that being said, it's still very much so important to hear out the Canadian perspective as well and hear experiences of people that are actually living there. That's one of the reasons why we did have Lance on to discuss it because he is a Canadian and, you know, he has that experience. Being he had been on the ground there. Right. He was literally there uh, counter protesting, essentially. So, um, you know, it's important to get those perspective, too. We try to do our best in that regard. Uh, but, yeah, let's watch a little more of this. Uh, so I just I just can't talk about it. should I not talk about the Ukraine thing at all should I like not talk should I just should only talk about it come on this isn't a position that most people in my community have most of the time these are bad arguments being trotted out now because it's you're defending a, a he seems genuinely people, triggered you know? by Which the way. I think is really really um really dumb the final the final thing that I'll say um is that a lot of people online are lying about these protests there are people who are making statements about the extent of the emergencies act which you're free to look up on Wikipedia if you want. I don't. I don't want to just like boringly recite a Wikipedia article for you here. But the basic gist of it is that Trudeau and you know the the federal government, you know they they all do a big dab and they authorize 30 days of Trudeau going Super Saiyan, where he gets to do. I won't say he gets to do whatever he wants, but he does get to do like a lot. You know, um, uh, here you know freezing assets uh, uh, that are linked to protesters. Um, and there's a reason that they're doing this, and the reason they're doing this is because. Um, the 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 freedom convoy so named is getting a lot of its money in very large amounts and a lot of it's coming from america because we have american conservatives who are using this as a proxy movement etc cetera, etc cetera, right so the idea is by freezing these assets they starve out the protests now i am very against this i'm far more against that than i am in sending in police or military i've explained why but i will again all right the issue is that a lot of people online are lying about the uh, emergencies act there are people saying for example that uh, court orders are necessary in order to freeze a person's assets or that the asset freezers are only being done to distributors of wealth or to direct like account payments being made from like suspected or flagged uh distributors you know like a, like uh funding campaigns these are not true so this is an article from the cbc that just came out four hours ago and i don't know where all this misinformation is coming from or why people in my community are reflexively defending an act of government like Oh, I got some ideas. I don't know where you guys are getting this, but here. Yeah, look. I know, right? That's okay. the thing. It's like, now you know how I feel when people like you advocate for censorship and deplatforming of people that you don't agree with. It's like, yeah, it's kind of fucking embarrassing to be like, oh, I'm on the same team as this fucking jackass. Yeah, now you know how it fucking feels, Bosch. Yeah, and it's also kind of reaping what you sowed, right? If your main fucking response to every international crisis is that the United States needs to go in there and clean it up and that this is somehow actually a leftist response, like, oh, no, we actually needed to stay in Afghanistan. Do you guys remember when he was telling us that we actually needed to stay in Afghanistan? Otherwise, Russia and China were going to take it over. Like, this was a real fucking fear mongering episode that he did uh, trying to bash Biden for getting out of Afghanistan. That's what I mean. So, of course, your audience is going to expect that. They all think you're a fucking genius, Bosch. Like, if you read the Vosh subreddit most of the time they're just fucking worshiping the guy like blah, blah, like i'll give credit where credit's due he's a strong debater uh but sometimes his arguments are horse shit and that's why we like to pick them apart on the vanguard sometimes for fun um like in this time because it, those those people are going to take what he says seriously and then when you start feeding them something that doesn't necessarily compute in this case something that's too rational for them um they just melt down and, and he's like wait what did this happen you know and you know again Shout out to Vosh for at least having the, uh, you know, audacity to be like, fuck all of you. I'm right about this. And, you know, sure, he molded uh, quite massively online for 
uh, a while last night, but uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we were t- we were discussing this a little bit earlier, but if there is one thing that's respectable about Vosh is that he's not afraid of his audience. Um, there's a there's a concept called audience capture, which happens a lot when it comes to YouTube channels and podcasts, where you know they'll develop an audience that they don't necessarily actually agree with on everything, and then out of fear of backlash, they mold their opinions and their takes to fit what they know their audience wants wants to hear. And obviously, Vosh does that to some degree. Everyone does, um, but I do appreciate the fact that he's willing to double down on issues where he does clearly have a strong disagreement with his community call them out where he sees fit and try to you know correct the record and change minds um you know that is that is respectable it's something that can be tough to do obviously we know that from experience but you know uh, and this tweet kind of uh talks about what we were just you know saying he says this is the price i pay for the faustian bargain i made to cultivate a community full of people willing to vote for biden so yeah it's like you know who would have known that a raw raw biden type of viewership uh is gonna be uh in favor of this action from trudeau because you know they're just gonna be reflective flexibly partisan nine times out of 10. And that's one of the most annoying things ever is when people can't just, you know, stand by their principle, regardless of which political side of the spectrum it's affecting. Uh, it's something that I quite uh, find quite annoying, um, especially when it comes to issues of censorship and uh, this issue now, as far as protesters rights in Canada. Um, I think that, you know, if the shoe was on the other foot, the left would be so much more outraged, but because it's happening to right wingers, um, they're, you know, a lot more quiet about it. And, uh, they're sympathizing with and defending the establishment. So that's uh, something that embarrasses me as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly spot on. And I don't know, reaping what you sowed, that's it. I get, you know, like, oh, no, guys, it, once again, it, it's not anything but the, the military that can solve this problem. That's, that's the progressivism. Okay, uh, I don't know about that, but it's a very unique style of anarchy I'll, I'll i'll tell you that vosh your anarchism is one of a kind <laughs> it involves lots of military intervention <laughs> yeah I really loves deploying the military under his anarchist state anyway let's take in a little bit more of this we don't have to watch it all obviously according to the regulations published late tuesday financial institutions are required to monitor and halt all transactions that funnel money to demonstrators, a measure designed to cut off funding to a well-financed protest that has taken over large swaths of Ottawa's downtown core. So that sounds a little ambiguous, or maybe even like kind of, okay, right? Required to monitor and halt transactions that funnel money to demonstrators. Let's read, first of all, this I'd also take issue with if that was the plain text of the issue, but let's go a little bit further, okay? What new powers do the banks have under the Emergencies Act? Uh, emergency economic measure order goes beyond simply asking banks to stop transferring funds to protest organizers. The government wants banks to stop doing business with some people altogether. The order says that banks and other financial entities like credit unions, co-ops, loan companies, trusts, and crypto platforms must stop providing any financial or related services to people associated with protests, with the protests, a move that will result in frozen accounts, stranded money, and canceled credit cards. I don't know why. So again, if you're not one of the people who have been spreading misinfo about this and you. Uh, nice little bit of NBC plugging. But yeah, oh, they, they, this is I mean, essentially what he's going to do is he's going to go on and, and try and justify his position to say, you know, oh, I don't support this ex- expansion of uh, emergency powers because it, it, it basically allows Justin Trudeau to do all of this without going through a court order and doing all this kinds of stuff. But the head scratcher for me is like, once you send in the military, it's basically like fucking martial law. Like, do we really think that they're going to be like getting uh, fucking warrants from the judge before they start busting skulls, Bosch? Like I've been there when it's just the police, the police look basically like the army too, when they are fucking serious and they want to like intimidate you and you'll be, and and I don't even know if I showed up to a single fucking George Floyd protest. I've never seen a picture of him there. Uh, If he did good for him, but I just mean like you really get a fucking perspective of what we're up against when we protest uh, when you're at a like a, a rally like that. Uh, because you've got the rows and rows and rows and rows of robo cops and they've got the shields up and there's fucking tear gas everywhere and you're you know uh, somebody's got the baking soda and water that's going over people's faces and all this kind of stuff it feels like a fucking war zone i've never been at a protest where they actually bring in the fucking military i can't imagine what it's like i've watched fucking young girls get just maced the fuck down in broad daylight uh whacked in the head with shit right like regular like people you would be fucking crazed out of your mind to you know uh what they were just willing to do at like two o'clock in the afternoon on a fucking sunday or whenever the hell it was that we were out there 
um the military there it's it's complete lawlessness bro we don't fucking punish our military ever ever remember we tried to and then trump fucking pardoned them and it was like a big deal there was like oh yeah these guys were like one of the two people ever to be held to you know to some sort of consequence for their actions overseas and then trump pardoned them and everybody on the right was like yeah rah, rah, rah. like we don't fucking do that shit in this country we pun we do not punish our military unless they do something like expose the fucking horrifying things that our military is doing if you shut the fuck up uh you're not going to get in trouble you know but anyway i just can't believe that he's like going to hold on to this like Oh, well, we need the justice system to make these ideas and then also be like the military. They don't fucking care once they get called. They will they will just break it up with aggression and raw force. Yeah, 100 uh, percent. Do you want to watch a little bit more of this? I mean, I'm kind of good. But if there was anything else that you wanted to play, I'm I'm fine. I, I kind of get where he's going with. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. There's some other good parts in this. I did watch the entirety of it. There's a pretty decent part towards the end where he compares um, the uh, apologism going on for the authorization of the Patriot Act and other such uh, authoritarian legislation in the wake of 9-11 and the way that a lot of people on the right wing conservative side just defended that. Um, he compared that to the way that a lot of liberals are now defending the state's right to uh, basically just go after people financially shut off their bank assets and um, all that kind of stuff. So I think that was a pretty potent point. But again, it's just annoying about this because he's almost there. He comes so close to having the right opinion. Um, but then he has to advocate for the deployment of the military on the streets of Canada, which is just obviously going far, uh, way too far. So, you know, disappointing, but almost there, Vosh. You're almost fucking there, bro. So uh, this was definitely a little bit frustrating, but definitely entertaining to see him at war with his own community. I'm always here for some of that drama.